So Jay, like um, the the current state of bodybuilding, right? Mm -hmm. And the health issues. Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, we've seen, we hear about like you know some of the stuff. Do you think guys nowadays, right, are pushing the limit too much in comparison to the year time, or what? 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 If, what is your your take on the whole health issues in bodybuilding? I don't think it's really changed. I think everyone over the years has, you know, pushed the limits of what their physical makeup is. And I think that, you know, you hear about the food amounts or the drugs or, you know, you're trying to develop a body. I think guys tend to overeat more. And I think that's the most dangerous thing, honestly, uh, because that amount of protein, uh, you know, the constant training, um, you know, the recovery process. I mean, it starts to wear and the guys are getting older that are competing. That's, that's the, that's the difference. I think as they continue to beat down their bodies, as they get into their thirties and forties, I mean, that's when you start, you know, I'm looking at that as a health aspect. I mean, I retired at 40. Could I have kept going? Yes. But for me, it was like, okay, I achieved great success in my 30s, you know, 20s also, but I was able to carry the Olympia title through my 30s. And for me, I, I never thought about, okay, if I lo lost this thing, where do I go? Like, it's only downward from there, right? Unless I was able to regain it back, which history kind of tells, you know, a guy at 40 years old isn't necessarily going to come back and win the Mr. Olympia title against guys in their 30s, especially someone that had better genetics than me. So... I think that everyone has a certain genetic makeup, meaning they're destined for, you know, body issues like hip issues, heart problems, you know, cancers, whatever it is. I really don't think that, you know, the, I think some guys abuse drugs just like anyone uh, as, as far as even the recreational side or smoking cigarettes to alcohol. We've seen it all. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, the guys that reach that elite level, especially at the Olympia level, are there for a reason with or without drugs, they would still be somewhat more genetically inclined to do better. And I think that there's a lot of misconception with the top guys using more stuff or doing more damage to their bodies than the guys that are lower level. I think the training and, like I said, the nutrition have a lot to do with your... Uh, the time you actually can be on top and be able to remain healthy. And I say that not to sit here and point at myself and say, hey, I'm a model of what, you know, perfect, you know, limitations are. But you know what? I was a volume trainer. I never trained crazy heavy. Um, I ate very, very well. I, had, I worked with a nutritionist since the 18 years old, and I never was a big protein eater. I was more of a carbohydrate eater. Um, and I think that had a lot to do with why now at 45, I can continue to train with zero joint pain. Uh, I had an injury, of course, that knocked me out of the Olympia for my you know, second to last year, but uh, my body feels great. And I'm still eating on a very clean diet. Uh, and I think that, you know, I'm just looking at now as like, okay, how long can I live? Whereas if you told me at 25, like, okay, if you can win Mr. Olympia and you, you're going to limit yourself to live to 40, I probably would have made the decision to win the Olympia and decide to, to uh, you know, if I had the risk of, you know, dying at 40 years old, I would have said, okay, I'll, I'll take the Olympia title. But that mentality changes as you get older. You want to live longer, right? Uh, and I think a lot of athletes would say the same thing, or maybe they'd be afraid to say that. But I can tell you my mindset was I wanted to be the champion so bad I was willing to give up you know, half my life to do that. But I think now uh, if people are smart, there's, what concerns me is they're putting stuff in their body that isn't what it says it is. And I think we've dealt with that all along, but this kamikaze, the way guys are you know, taking steroids and whatever else that are made in people's basements, it's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. And I think they don't even know what they're taking half the time because they're reading on the internet, take this, take that, you know, do this, do that. And they're not using doctors, 
to bounce questions off, off of and any, nothing's really legit. And that's the biggest concern in the health aspect. And I think that's what's going to affect people later in, in their decisions they made now in the future. I mean, we, we get asked this question a lot, you know, from people who are not actually competitors, right? Because, you know, bodybuilding, a lot of people say it's kind of like a cult, right? Mm -hmm. And we, you have that, like, that dark shadow over it, that dark cloud. And a lot of it is misconstrued, you know, it's not understood from the average Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, they ask, when you try to defend it, they're, they always ask you the same question. So, is it healthy? Is bodybuilding healthy? I think bodybuilding healthy is it is healthy to a certain point, but I mean if you if you really look at the aspect of like if, if you go on stage and compete at the Mr. Olympia and you dehydrate yourself, you go to the hospital, they do a test and your your kidneys are in renal failure, is that healthy? Is it healthy not to drink water for twelve hours? No. It's not healthy. But we can argue everything in life like you know, you get in a car and you drive in New York City and there's a million cars and you're rolling your windows down, and you're breathing, you know, carbon monoxide or whatever. Is that healthy? Um, you know, is going out and getting drunk on a Tuesday night every Tuesday because you're meeting your buddies at the pub, is that healthy? I mean, it really comes down to, you know, we look healthy, but I think every person, remember, every day, forward is one day closer to dying right so we just don't know when our time actually is we try to do everything we can to you know look as great as we can enjoy ourselves as much as we can before that day comes so i don't know what's healthy these days i can tell you that i thought bodybuilding i thought i was doing it the right way uh, i never had any health scares in that sense any serious health scares of course i've had injuries and I've had sicknesses or whatever else, but it never really was really like, okay, you're beating your body down, stop doing this. I mean, I suffered from mono when I was a young kid because I dragged myself down and like overworked myself and my dad went through, you know, you know, he went through some health scares with ulcers because of stress levels. I mean, there's a lot of different variables on what goes on, but I mean, what is healthy these days? Not so, but Hey, getting up there and competing and, you know, being under 600 pounds on a squat, is that really healthy? I mean, eventually your body breaks down and athletes all go through that transition. You just hope that you're going to be in a little better shape than the, the last guy you read about. That's all. So I think, uh, I think bodybuilding can be somewhat healthy, but you're still questionable. I understand why people would ask, is that really healthy?